How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Today we got some uh, Hardage turret lay set up and some viewer mail. Stay tuned. How you doing? Randy Richard in the shop. I are a real engineer now. Look at that hat. Thanks Wes. Uh, from down in Texas. Russ Hout. He uh, sent me a real train engineer's hat. So I can run the train now. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to go work for Amtrak though. No. But uh, you know being a ship's engineer we, we didn't get hats like this. We didn't get any hats. They ended up making us wear hard hats. It was crazy. Just crazy. Anyway, uh, I got some uh, viewer mail here I want to show you, uh, other than the hat. And uh, we'll uh, do some uh, turret lay. The, I'm going to go through some of the finer, finer points about turret lay setup and some, some of the things you need to consider. Andy Hunter down in Las Vegas sent me some of his uh, homemade salsa. It's fresh salsa. He ships it out right away. Uh, he, he sells the stuff. Uh, he's on Instagram uh, at uh, Andy Salsa. This is wonderful stuff. I'm not a... I can't eat stuff that's real hot. Uh, this was mild salsa. It's fresh. Oh, awesome stuff. Just awesome. So uh, check out Andy's uh, salsa uh, on... Instagram. Contact him and he'll probably send you some fresh salsa. Kevin Oldfield over in Greece sent me a pen. Well, the package came taped up with a plastic bag in it. The pen uh, obviously was stolen and they somebody stapled it and taped it back together. And so I told Kevin what happened. And Kevin sent me another pen that he made. He makes pens. Uh, he shows them on Facebook. I don't know if Kevin's on Instagram or not, but he shows them on Facebook. He's over in Greece, and he sent me a beautiful uh, pan here out of some, um, I think it's maple burl. And uh, uh, just just beautiful job. Beautiful. So, look up Kevin if you need a pen. There's Roscoe. That's his upstream, and that's the highway. On the other side, that's the highway into the park. The boys in Canada sent me a set of their jacks. Uh, these are beautiful. This is uh, engraved. I think this is a, ma a maple box. It looks maple. Uh, th these are these are awesome. So we're going to show those right there. They're all set in the box. Uh, if they have any left, if you really want a really fine set of jacks, uh, machinist jacks, uh, they're selling these dirt cheap for what you, what you're getting here. Uh, just to tell you, these are these are beautiful things. They've all been heat treated. A little set of ball bearings. Uh, comes with a Tommy bar for the jacks. Two set two jacks with two uh, height extensions. These are these are extremely well made. Um, this this part here comes off. A little ball sits in that little divot, and a little V groove in the top. And then uh, the Tommy bar in here for adjustments. The threads are beautiful. Uh, nice close tolerance threads, just uh, smooth as can be. These are awesome. So the little uh, height, uh, you can add these for the height. They all fit together very nice. And they made them to, to work, I think, uh, just like this. Yeah, uh, I think the bed of a curt vise is like two and three quarters high on the, off the like mill table. So these are tall enough you can put them underneath something that's sitting right in your vise. Uh, but if you, uh, I know they have some to sell. 
If they still have some, boy, these are worth every penny. They're not asking really a lot for them. I was amazed. So contact Pierre or uh, on Pierre's Garage, Pierre Beaudry, or I'll put their links, uh, of course, up. Or uh, Phil Desjardin, uh, uh, Phil's Projects. And uh, thank you, uh, uh, Robert, also. And then uh, I'm not sure who built the box. Oh, boy. Anyway, uh, thank you guys for these uh, beautiful, beautiful jacks. Uh, I have some uh, things I'm going to be sending you guys. Uh, so once I get things made. But uh, we're going to do a little check. How good are they? And we're not going to be too tough on them. <laughs> so I, I have this, uh, the gauge here, the meter set up for, uh, we're, we're going to, we'll look at it in inches and millimeters. And we're, we're set up for, from zero to one is one thousandth of an inch. And so each mark is 50 millionths. And uh, on the millimeter side, this is, uh, so that's uh, two, two and a half hundredths of a millimeter. So the black scale. And each, each mark is a thousandth of a millimeter. And uh, what I'm going to do is here, we're just going to see how, I'm just going to do a quick check in here. We're going to see how parallel it is. Now, I'm going to see. I'll see if first I'm gonna see if I can find a high or uh, a, the low. That looks like the high right there. Okay, that right there looks like about the high. We'll, we're gonna set that. See if we can get that to set at zero. We'll say that's the high. We'll see how parallel their surfaces are here. I'm gonna just turn it 180 degrees. And oh there we go. So that's uh so every two marks is a tenth a, tenth of an inch and we have 12 marks so six tenths of being a parallel on the end there or uh, so that's uh, every marks a thousandth of a millimeter so we're at 10 50 16 thousandths of a millimeter so yeah 16 thousand mil so that's 0 0.0016 millimeters uh, off. So boys, I would say, you know, six tenths of parallel uh, on that uh, on that spacer. Let's, we'll, we'll take another one here. We'll take the other spacer, which is the same, supposedly around, well, uh, supposedly the same height, right? Well, it's not the same height because it doesn't even register. They were a little, a little off on their height. I don't know what the difference in height is, but As far as parallel will go, this one is only one tenth, roughly out of parallel. So this one's even better. Well, boys, the, your turning ability on your parallelism on the lathe is really good. <laughs> I doubt if any of my lathes are probably that close. <laughs> That's, a, that's just a fun thing to check. So thank you again, again you guys. And uh, 
contact these guys. I'll put their links to their channels and uh, I know they had something to sell. They, these are these are beautiful. Just a work of art. You're afraid to use them. Down here having lunch. Huh, Roscoe? Huh? I have stop one here. Uh, spot drill it after it's been faced. Now this is for the uh, threaded portion. This is for the uh, relief for the scribe it's piece itself. Thread. And then uh, just a little tiny uh, deeper after the thread. And we just extend it out, a little tension on it, lock it in, part it off. There we go. That's it. Only a couple hundred, few hundred more to go. Running the stainless, uh, stainless bodies right now. Running coolant with that, with this, uh, with the stainless, of course. This stuff's a little bit slower, especially this hole. I, I use I, I use parabol parabolic, you know, high twist drill uh, on these holes, and this this that really helps a lot. Especially in softer material, but also in the tougher stuff like stainless. Especially, uh, it's such a deep hole. It's about a half, three eighths to a half an inch or so past the flutes, uh, the depth. Also, I swapped around the position of these two drills, and I'm. Less pressure on the work this way. Uh, pushing against it, so it makes it makes that second hole uh, drill a lot easier. And I drop her down to real slow speed here for the tapping. I was having a little bit of trouble doing it real fast, and um, uh, a lot slower speed, and I'm not. They're coming out just fine now. A little bit of chips, uh, chips and knees. Uh, gotta clean them out. But uh, those are uh, coming out really good, really good. This wet lathe is wonderful. Yeah, things are going very, very quickly with this lathe. Uh, Logan lathe only has a half horse motor, and this is a one horse. Lamb coolant, uh, all set up on it. It's, uh, it's a pleasure to use.
All right, I got the stocks into the headstock now, and I gotta poke everything out uh, each time. <laughs> I got about six or seven more pieces left, and then I'm gonna change collet and do some more. Uh, then I'm gonna do the round stainless and round copper. Get those out. Get them done. I'm almost done with all these uh, bodies on this off one. Almost done with all off one. Back to the car. There's Roscoe. Coming? We're calibrating the speed indicator up here on the, the hardage. Uh, it's actually, uh, the, the high speed is twice as much as the low speed on the, on the scale here. And there's a bar that goes up and down, and that's hooked to the linkage through a rod down, down, down the bottom here on the linkage. And all you do is loosen it and adjust where that rod locks on. And, and I'm using a, a photo tack right here, and it has its digital readout right here, and you just adjust it with a knob in the back. This uh, actually works really well. I've had it for a long time. It's a digistrobe. And uh, so we're just going to run it here. And, uh, you know, this is a pretty uh, um, rough. It's not like it's a, you know, super accurate thing. The bar goes up and down. So we're up here. This is fast I can get to go right here. It's 2600. And, uh, Yeah, running. I was running at 2640, 2648, right in there. That's what I was running at. And 
even if you flip the lever, it drops to uh, the low speed side, and it's around 1300, right? a tap. And then uh, all you do is punch the button, and it goes down. Yeah, we're going to set 1200, let's see what that is. If you watch, you might be able to see that actually. I'm going to stop acting here. There's a white mark on the black ring painted on there. And obviously they've done this before. There we go. Okay. See that? See that stop action on the white spot? And we get the stop. We're at 1242, and it's uh, right there in the middle of the 1200 on the speed uh, indicator. So that's close enough. I don't know how slow it is. You know, uh, the indicator disappeared. And pretty slow. I don't think you have enough power though to uh, really turn uh, here. Probably, probably a couple hundred RPM. I uh, correct you around 300, 313. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, right there in the front. Three there, calibrated. So, uh, you guys, so if you've ended up with a turret lathe, turret lathes uh, were first built around 1850. Uh, approximately uh, so they've been around a long time and and really they haven't changed this lathe here is basically the same thing uh, yeah you get fancier tooling that maybe they didn't have quite then but uh, <coughs> excuse me but you know it's basically the same uh, they they started out without a chuck uh, they 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 used more of a collet type system, and this that's what this lathe is set up for. You can put a chuck on this lathe. This is a threaded spindle, and you can get uh, adapters or uh, mounting plates and such that will fit this, and or you make your own. But you can you can mount a chunk on chuck on here. Uh, but like I said, basically they're the same thing. They're a, a turret that turns automatically you know and you have depth stops to set each tool and away you go but what I want to talk about is is some of the features of, of a turret that you need to consider if you're how and setting up one and uh, before you even uh, get to the tools first off usually you're going to start off with a drawing All right uh, and that drawing is you know and you, this is what you need to plan from. This is the part you want to make. Uh, this is the body part of my of the scribes I make. And can you make that part? So you have to determine can the part be made within the confines of operation of this of of your machine. Well, this this turret has a stroke of four inches, and can that means can I drill a four inch hole? Yeah, probably not. Right now, I'm really stretching it on what I'm drilling. Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty close to the max actually. So I'm drilling a hole here that's a 2.44. I can go a smidge. I could go a smidge more. I could go a little more than that. Because why I say that is because you need clearance. Here, we're gonna come around. This is the longest one. Now I'm drilling this hole that full depth to the right to the end there, 2.44 inches. And as you can see, it spins 
right? Each tool spins and comes and locks in place. It sweeps in here, it has to sweep out over there. So you need clearance. And that's why I say you can't necessarily do a four inch hole because that four inch drill would stick out so much here that when it sweeps in, depending on where your part is, you only have so much room there to get it in. And it sweeps in, you know, uh, as you can see here. So it's, so what I'm, what I'm talking about, so is the operation of your turret and your machine is understanding how it works and why it works. So on the turret lathe, uh, you can see here I have some marks. What you want to determine, one of the very first things before you do anything, look, it will only go back so far, right? So we're just going to use the end here as a reference point. Now usually the turrets do not have these kind of marks on them. So you have to make your own. That's how far it goes back. Coming forward, it, it's only gonna come so far. Now, this lathe has a four inch stroke. Now, I'm on a tool that is, is basically maxed out. So that, it, go, it comes right to there. So that's probably four inches, right? We're pretty close to it. That is, it's four inches. So you need to know that. You need to know how far you can go. That's the, your, your maximum stroke. Oops. Right there, this one. So that's my maximum stroke, and that's as far back as it, all any of them go. That's the stop point. The next point you need to know is at which point do I have to pass, as I come in, I have to pass a certain point as I come in and at that point the turret trigger mechanism inside will allow you then to go back and the turret will turn there is a point if, if I don't come that to that point I, I cannot I, I can come back but I cannot come back enough to make the turret turn you understand? So it has to trigger. So what I, I right here, so what I did is I marked the center of the cap when I was first checking this out. And the the fur the turret has to come this to this mark here, and you can hear it, it's a very slight click inside of this turret, and it clicks at this point right here at this line. So I have to at least to come to that line before I go. See, if I come up here, before I go back, before I come to, if I don't, don't get to the line, if I don't get to the line, and I go back, the turret's not going to change. And it only comes back to here. It doesn't come back to its full stroke. You're, you, you still have another inch that it could go back, but it won't go back that far. See, so if I don't pass this line, I cannot go back my full stroke and have the turret turn. So you have to know where that trigger point is. So what you want is you want all your tools to go past that line in, in the operation so that when you do come back to go to your next tool, you can do that. If you don't go to pass this line, you're, never, you're not gonna be able to turn your turret. It's gonna sit there and that's it. I'm stuck, all right? So, that's an important point to understand. The next one, the other point is, if I do come back, at which point does it start to turn? So I'm pulling it back and it's straight, and right there, right there I, I marked it, it was about the center of the screw. Right that point there, right there, right this point right here, is when the turret starts to turn. So that means, for clearance of my tool, I need to be able to, the, the tool needs to be able to turn and clear everything and anything that else I might have on the lathe. Whether it's the part, well, hopefully it's gonna clear the part, but the part, but if I have a cross slide in here where I'm doing another operation in a tool post, well, is my 
tool that's on the turret going to clear that tool post. That's why planning all your operations is so important. So you need to know how far back it goes total. You need to know where the trigger point is that you must pass. And you need to know the point at which point does well does the turret start to turn as when you come back and it's right right there those are those, those marks are not on the, on the machine and you the, these things here will drive you crazy <laughs> if you don't understand where each one of those is now when I do it I like to start with my longest tool that sticks out from the tool post so I, I so look, we're just going to start here. So this machine, uh, uh, that's the uh, collet insert, and I have the collet out. So there's the collet. This is a 21 style collet. We talked about that before. And here's the uh, ring that it registers against. It just kind of snaps in there and registers against this surface because this collet, when you engage the collet, this this piece here comes forward and pushes this here against this taper and pushes it up, you know, tight against the ring, which is in a fixed location. And what that does is it closes the collet and your your part doesn't move. That's why this collet is uh, pretty nice. It, uh, it just clamps down on it and the part doesn't move. So we're gonna, we'll, we'll stick this on here. So I like to I like to start with the longest tool that to make sure I can operate. Now I know how far I have to drill. I have it in a, a drill tool holder, and I have it out about a quarter of an inch from full in all the way into the turret. Gives me a little bit of an adjustment there. You don't have a lot. The stem is not very long. Uh, the stem is about this long, about an inch and a quarter length so you don't have a lot to play with there but you have a little bit and as i said and the parting tool when it is up here and when it comes down it only leaves about a sixteenth of an inch sticking out of material so i'm going to would come up here and i start my drilling i drill 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 and i, w I went past my my return point so that's good, 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 all the way up. And I've set my stop on the end. Each, each one is adjustable, each tool, to how far that goes. And then it comes back, and it's going to start to turn right there. Should start to turn right there. And comes around to the next tool. If you start with your longest tool, that gives you your clearance. If you have, like I said, a cross slide and a tool post, you can get your clearance all set around that one tool. If all your other tools are shorter, then you know you're not gonna have a, a clearance issue as long as your longest one makes it. So now I've planned out my tools. Uh, I'm gonna, I don't, if I don't have to face it off, that, that really helps. I don't have to have my cross slide in here to do a facing operation. So since I'm using the overhead parting, so I'm using a spot drill, and if there's a little nub, the spot drill will uh, handle that and wipe it out. <laughs> uh, and I can drill right, still be uh, accurate enough for my scribes. Now, if you were doing something that had to be super accurate, then you probably want to face it off you, uh, first and then, and then go with it, the spot drill. But the spot drill then makes sure we're, we're centered up. And we set it so it just barely does anything, right? And then you're going to come in and we're going to drill our long center hole. The, I, I originally, in the soft material, I can swap these the other way. It, it either way. Uh, I think it's a little faster with the softer material like brass to do the big, the big hole first versus the small hole. Um, but 
in the harder material and the tougher material, the uh, the stainless, I found it's it, it's better to go with the small hole first, all the way in, and you're pecking and clearing chips. And then when you and you only have so much uh, pressure on your work with that with that small drill, you're not pushing that hard. But and then when you come in for the counter bore for the threaded part. It's already been pre-drilled, and this is real easy. Low, low pressure on your, on your work. Uh, you want to watch that pressure on your work. Uh, you don't want if it slips in your collet, you're going to push that work back in. So, uh, with with a turret lathe, you can put some pretty heavy duty pressure on. So doing it this way with a small hole first, uh, I I apply less pressure, and it works really well, and it makes this hole uh, quite quick. And then we're going to come around and then we're going to, then we would be tapping it now this this uh you when you're tapping on a turret lathe you're going to use a you are going to want to use a let's see if i can get this right here this is a this is a tapping head and the lathe is spinning it will grab the tap and draw the turret in and once it hits it gets to the stop on the turret this part will pull because it's still wanting to tap a little bit so it taps a little more and then releases and spins so you're going going in and then you, it hits the stop and then the tap keeps going in and then this this will release and spin with the lathe see and then you just reverse the lathe and it locks and drives it just runs the tap right out which and you just follow it with the turret by hand so that, that that's a tapping head. And then I have another drill here. Uh, I'm just using a, a larger spotting drill, and I'm doing a a little uh, end thread to clean up. Uh, you can call it a slight chamfer. It just cleans the end of the burr off the end of the threads in there that are formed that first thread, and it cleans that burr off. And then you're gonna have a work. Then I have a work stop. So I'm gonna come up here. And I feed my, I release my collet, I feed my stock out, and I, I just reach over and I grab it and I push it through. Uh, you can get, uh, you can have different type of feed mechanisms, of course, uh, to automatically push it up. I have a long uh, 12 foot uh, pneumatic feed tube that came with a Logan lathe. I think I'm going to cut that and make a short feed tube because I, I just use six foot stock. And... That way, there's a, as soon as you release your collet, it automatically would get fed out. Uh, and then you lock your collet, collet again, so a lot quicker. But here I stop, the, stop it, I feed the, feed the stock up to the stop, relock the collet, and then part it off. And, and it's ready to go for the next part. And uh, you've seen that. I uh, showed uh, the process going through. But anyway, so know how your turret works know where these points are these trigger points are uh, so you can figure out your clearances uh, and that's about it for now and the next one we'll do we'll actually do the setup for uh, some other tool for some tooling